That chant echoed through European basketball arenas in the 1990s and the early 2000s when Dejan Badaroga reigned as the king of European basketball. Although Badaroga was drafted by the Sacramento Kings in 1995, the Serbian chose to spend his entire career in Europe. I will explain what type of player Badaroga was and why he never played a single minute in the NBA. Hailing from the Serbian village of Klik, Badaroga rose to fame in Italy while playing for Trieste and Olimpia Milano. The 6'9 forward developed into an all-around offensive player, dazzling fans with flashy moves and a knack for scoring. Despite being a prolific scorer throughout his career, Badaroga maintained remarkable efficiency. Take the 1995-96 season when he played for Olympia as an example. Badaroga averaged 23.3 points during the Italian league's regular season, shooting 63.8% from the field. Although his shooting percentage dipped slightly during the playoffs, he still managed to make 60% of his field goal attempts over 10 games, including 60.9% from beyond the arc. It's important to note that Badaroga's success extended beyond club basketball. He contributed to Yugoslavia winning three European championships, two World Cups, and an Olympic silver medal in 1996 in Atlanta, where Yugoslavia lost the gold medal match to the United States, a team featuring all-time greats Carl Malone and Scottie Pippen. Badaroga possessed a diverse range of dribble moves and impeccable footwork, enabling him to break down defenders and create space for both himself and his teammates. Like Luka Doncic, Badaroga didn't rely on elite athleticism, rather he emphasized skill over physical prowess. While he wasn't an elite defender due to his lack of athleticism and slender frame, he remained a reliable presence on defense. His footwork and lateral quickness allowed him to switch onto guards and maintain a solid defensive stance against larger players. There's no doubt that Badaroga possessed more than enough skill to make an impact in the NBA. He has expressed no regrets about staying in Europe, as he saw no reason to join the NBA solely for the sake of having it on his resume. Badaroga has criticized contemporary European players who opt for the NBA. According to him, many pursue the NBA merely to claim they play in the best league on the planet, only to end up spending minimal time on the court before being sent to the G League. He opted to be the king of Europe, desiring a significant role and a collection of trophies, both of which he achieved winning 13 major trophies over his professional career. Circumstances might have been different had Badaroga been drafted by a different team or if the Kings had been in a better position in the mid-90s. While the Kings weren't dreadful, they weren't contenders for the championships that Badaroga so passionately desired. Moreover, Badaroga mentioned that he couldn't handle the idea of losing 30 to 40 games a year while continuing his business as usual. By the time the Kings became respectable and eventually an elite team, it was likely too late for Badaroga. After all, the early 2000s marked Badaroga's peak, and he was busy accumulating three EuroLeague titles. Why would he venture into the uncharted waters of the NBA when he was already the king of Europe and living his dreams? It's also worth noting that while some Europeans are lured by the prestige, glamour, and money of the NBA, Badaroga didn't care for any of that. He cherished the simple life he led in Europe and continued to earn millions while achieving success, as opposed to earning millions in the face of constant defeat.